right here. Uh, congrats, man, on the win. Uh, you weren't supposed to be here as of like a few weeks ago, right? So to have all this happen, to go through the process and then win, like how does it feel right now? Yeah, it's awesome. Like I stay ready for a reason to take opportunities like this. Um, yeah, I don't know, just number 10 guy. Like that's what I want. I want to find out who the best in the world is and I think it's me. So yeah, anytime. How did the fight play out relative to your expectations? Uh, I thought I was going to be able to, like, the, checking the calf kick, I thought wasn't going to be a problem. Like, um, I'm practicing that a lot in training, and the overhand, I thought I was going to be able to ca counter better. Um, after the second round, my calf was pretty banged up, so I had to go southpaw, which I've never done in a fight before. So, um, yeah, expect it to be cleaner, but next time I'll make some adjustments, and we will be cleaner. And uh, it seems like there's a pretty clear next step, right? Are you expecting to be on the September card in Australia, in Sydney? Yeah, for sure. Like, um, I think it's like 10, 12 weeks away or something like that. It's like a perfect turnaround. So uh, fight in front of my home country and get all the people from my gym and all the people that I know that I'm friends with and family with, like, come over and support me. It's going to be uh, going to be great. So you're right in the front, right? Uh, uh, obviously, I'm sure you'd want a full camp for your fights and everything. But in terms of, like, this being your UFC debut and on such short notice, is there almost a blessing in disguise that you didn't have, like, all these weeks and months of, like, dwelling on you and you just kind of got to just jump in and focus on the fight, didn't have to do all the build-up in the media and everything before this? No, I mean, I couldn't care like, either way. Like, I'm not going to get swept up in, oh, crap, this is like the UFC, I'm doing all this media, all that sort of stuff. Like, it's cool, it's a bit weird, but, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, I train to fight people, so I'm going to be able to do that, whether it's, yeah, jet lag, no sleep, whatever the hell is going on in my life, I'm going to be able to fight somebody, so... Steve, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to you before the fight. Uh, take me through you finding out about the fight and then having to come all the way over to, to Canada to, to take this matchup. Yeah, basically I got a call. Uh, I found out that Clayton Carpenter was injured and then it's like straight away after, before I had any time to process it, it was like, oh, by the way, we've got David Dvorak on June 10th. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I don't know who that is, but I'll look him up and found out he was, yeah, number 10 ranked. So I called Dad, called Dave. Um, and they basically had the same reaction I had, which is like, let's let's go, let's take out, shock the world. And, and I know, like you mentioned, didn't have a lot of time to prepare for him, didn't know a ton about him. Uh, was there anything in the fight, though, that, that maybe surprised you that you weren't expecting? As I said before, I really thought that I was going to be able to check the, uh, the calf kick a little bit better. Like, I got the leg up there, just didn't quite get it around enough. Um, and I thought he'd be easy, easy to find. I thought he was going to miss that overhand. I'd be a little bit closer, able to uh, crack him on the way like, after he missed, but... Couldn't quite get there. Um, yeah, that's all that was really different than I expected. When would you like to have that next fight? Well, obviously, I guess the Sydney card is, is sort of the, the goal there, but um, any, any opponents in mind, or just sort of leave that up to your management? Yeah, I want, obviously, somebody that's, like, highly touted. So um, anybody inside the top 15, um, I don't necessarily think that will give me a top 10 ranked guy again, but, like, if they do, like, I'm going to take it. I'm going to beat somebody else up. So, yeah, whatever they want to give me, but, yeah, Sydney. How familiar were you with Vancouver? Because there's actually a lot of Australians that come up here for work uh, and, and spend a lot of time here. I don't know if you'd ever, I'm assuming you haven't been here before, but I'm sure you kind of knew a little bit about it. I came here when I was a kid. When I, was a kid. Um, I knew there was Australians around, but um, I was sort of shocked by how many people didn't understand what I was trying to say. Like we'd go to restaurants and I'd say, oh, can I please get a, a Coke? And they'd be like, what's a Coke? It's like, uh, Coca-Cola or this. And they're like, oh, Coke. I'm like, I just said the same thing you said, bro. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that was sort of shocking. But other than that, like, yeah, it's just another country, right? Like, embrace the culture. First UFC win, how are you going to celebrate tonight? Uh, I'm going to limp to a club or two. Yeah, get, get, get a few bevies in me and, um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Congrats on the win. Uh, one more in the front. You said you didn't know who David was, but he was ranked number 10. So how many names do you know in the UFC's top 15? <laughs> Uh, I know who the champion is. That's Brandon Moreno, right? Um, and I know Manel Kate, Nicholas... I uh, uh, forgot his name. Uh, Mateus Nicolau. I know, like, some of the better guys, but, um, yeah, I'd seen David Dvorak fight. I just didn't realise that's who it was. I didn't recognise his name off the bat. But I've watched pretty closely some of the top guys. So do you not watch MMA? Like, like we've been talk we've talked to a lot of fighters that just, when they're not fighting, they don't want to watch it. No, I watch it every week. Like, um... I'm like a nerd when it comes to that sort of stuff. I'm studying tape, all that sort of thing. So um, I'm definitely watching it, but uh, I'm pretty bad with names as it is. So um, I barely remember my dad's name. Just uh, to build on that, you know, when you when you were coming up, like who are the fighters who got you into the sport then? Um, the first one that comes to mind was Brock Lesnar. Um, 
he I watched WWE at the time and he came in and there's all this hype around him coming in. So he was number one. Jose Aldo, um, George St. Pierre, Matt Hughes, um, like that was some of my big influences for sure. Very cool. Steve, has it sunk in for you yet what you've achieved tonight really coming in, beating top 10 level um, opposition and on your UFC debut in front of a, a big arena? Um, it's a pretty impressive feat that you've just um, achieved. Uh, not really. It just feels like I fought another guy. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if it will sink in. Um, we'll see. But, yeah, again, whoever it is, I don't really care. So number 10, number one, yeah, bring it on. Do you like to dwell on these moments for a couple of days or a week, or do you like to just tunnel vision onto the next one and, and focus on that fight in Sydney down the line? No, I'll probably watch this fight, like, quite a few times in a row, like, figure out what I did well, what I did wrong. Um, and then, yeah, give it a week or so, and I'll be, uh, yeah, I'll be focused on who else, or whoever else they want to give me. Congrats on the win, man.